Greetings everyone, this is Non-Expert here back again with another video. Today we are going to be solving problem number 26 of our 30 lead code challenge and the problem that has been given to us today is the longest common subsequence problem. Again, if you want to try solving this problem on your own, you can pause this video and check out the lead code link given in the description below. For most of you who have already tried you know, dynamic programming before, you would notice this problem because this is one of the more famous problems in dynamic programming. But let's just try solving it as we move forward. So uh, before we do that, let's just look at the problem description. So you've been given two strings, text one and text two, and you need to return the length of the longest common subsequence. And the definition of a subsequence is uh, a subsequence is a string in a new string generated from the original string with um, some characters which can be deleted without changing the relative order of the remaining characters. So what that means is a subsequence can basically be a combination of all the characters from a string, but they need to have the same order. So if you have A, B, C, D, E, A, C, E would be a subsequence of it. As you can see, A sort of comes before C um, and C sort of comes before E, but A, E, C is not a subsequence because, well, there is no property like that. And a common subsequence between our two strings is a subsequence that is common to both strings. So we've been given a few examples over here and you can pause this video and check them out. They're pretty straightforward. You've been given A, B, C, D, E and you have another text which is A, C, E. And again, all you want to find out is the length of the longest common subsequence. So we can try solving this problem in a variety of ways. Um, the way I usually like to think about dynamic programming problems is that you can try solving this using recursion and then sort of move forward with the dynamic programming approach. Because if you sort of solve this using recursion, the DP problem becomes a lot more easier as well. So let's just have a look at text one and text two. So let's just go ahead and copy this so that we have it in our editor. And here we go. Cool. So Basically, what we want to do is, if you can, if you think about it, you can't do this in a simple iteration without usually using memory. So if you think about A, B, C, D, E, and you just say, hey, I just want to traverse through A first, then, then you know, look for whether I get an A, and then C, and so on and so forth. That approach really does not work, because if you have B over here, or let's not take B, if I have F over here, C, E would then become the longest common substring between these two guys. So keep that in mind. And the way you would sort of try to solve this problem is by using backtracking. So let's just go ahead and create a simple utility function which we can call recursively and then solve the, our problem. So let's just call it util. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass i and j. And i and j is just going to be, i is going to be the index for text one and j is going to be the index for text two. And basically what I would expect is that utility, this utility function, I can just call it and I can just pass in the length of text one. So let me just go ahead and create a quick variable. I'm just gonna call n as length of text one and similarly for um, text two, this is just so that I have those values in. And if I just pass in um, these parameters and I backtrack it, it becomes a lot more easier for me. So then, um, again, this is just my personal opinion. I find it, this a lot more easier. But the way you can look at this is you sort of compare or sort of you iterate and you start comparing whether the last element or where, not last element, wherever the i and j elements are, whether they are the same. And if they are the same, then you increase the count by one. And then you recurse forward. And if you already, if you already hit a value, which is, well, which means that you've already traversed through everything in G or in I, well, in that case, you just break out. So that becomes a base condition. So a base condition is, hey, if I is equal equal to zero or G is equal equal to zero, then you just want to return a zero. Pretty straightforward. Um, then we sort of come across what would happen if I have, uh, if I'm on the i and J indexes of text one and text two respectively, and they both are the same characters. So let's just do that. So let's just say if text one i is equal equal to text two j, well, in that case, I want to increment the count because I've found a match and I want to use that match moving forward. So I can just add it 
and I can just you know recurse forward so then or backward however you want to call it I just go to the next element and do remember that we're going from n to 0 or m to 0 so you do i minus 1 and j minus 1 respectively and that just sort of moves your or recursive calls forward and eventually what you want to do is you want to return the max value of whether you're going whether you're decrementing i or j and then sort of you move forward so if this condition does not hold then there is no increment and you sort of recurse through and you try to identify whether um, the values can be updated so basically you can just say util i j minus 1 so recurse through all the values where decrement j and not decrement i and recurse through all the values where decrement i but don't decrement j and whatever value these two guys return just return the max of it and that's going to be our output so let's just go ahead and run this and hopefully this should run fine um wait it is not running fine so let's just have a look at what's going wrong over here so we have text span and i is equal to something and we're getting a runtime error so oh i see the problem so you need to go yeah that was my fault um you start with we say it's the like it's zero index space so you have to go in minus one and then you can probably move forward from there so we ran this and you can see that the expected um output is coming out to be two uh, i mean the answer that we're getting is two whether we expect it to be three and the reason for that is actually pretty simple you can just look at this base condition you don't want to like exit out when you go to i equal equal to zero well that just makes sense you can just do instead of i equal equal to zero you do i equal equal to minus one or j equal equal to minus one because zero is also an index and there might be a character there so what we're missing out in our case is these a values and not we're not really incrementing them so let's just run this hopefully this should run fine and it is the problem with this pro like this entire approach is that we're using recursion and um there is as in, as you call it in dynamic programming paradigms you call it the overlapping sub problem or something like that um which basically means that your your time complexity is running in an exponentiated rate so in this case since you have two values over here and it runs and if you sort of draw it out you'll see that the time complexity is two raised to power n and that's not really that optimal i'm pretty sure like if i run it it's not going to work and this is where sort of dp sort of comes into play but i'm just going to comment this thing out and we're going to be referring to this entire approach and then we're going to build out our logic so before we do that let's just think a little bit about how dynamic programming really works it's the same approach that you're using but you're memoizing your solutions in a way and then you're storing them as you're moving forward so what we can do is we can have a 2d grid which can um which can sort of contain all these values so you know we have the ith index and the jth index so i could probably be something like our rows and j could be something like our columns um if that doesn't make sense um you can sort of draw it out and when you think about it you can make a b c d e as a bunch of um columns or rows and a c e as um bunch of other things so what i'm trying to say is you can have something like a b c d e and i'm just trying to represent the um the grid so bear with me so this is what your grid should look like eventually and then you can sort of you know store all those values that you were trying to return um inside all these guys and then you can use dynamic programming to understand without having to you know go back to all the previously computed values um, that's enough of me talking let's just get down to the dynamic programming code so what we want to do is we just want to create that grid structure that we just talked about so let's just do that um, as pretty straightforward I'm just going to pass in a few values so I'm just going to say none and I'm just going to pass it um, if it's n plus one uh, for i in well range of let's do it like this so that we have consistency to what we just said so columns are going to be defined by your um, text 2 and rows are going to be defined by your text 1 pretty straightforward now comes the beauty of this part and do notice over here that i'm passing in m plus 1 and n plus 1 and the reason for that is is because we're going to be looking at the previous value we're going to be using i minus 1 and j minus 1 to fetch out the values um this will make sense to you in a minute so just bear with me so we're just going to start with 
iterating for all the values inside um, text one and same thing for all the values inside text two. So let's just quickly do that. And if our i is equal equal to zero or j is equal equal to zero, well, in that case, you just want to make dp i j equal to zero. Pretty straightforward. If you if you don't really have anything, you want to make zero, and this is handling this piece condition over here. Do notice that we were giving i equal equal to minus one, but right now our minus one is sort of already taken into account. Now the other thing that you might want to take care of, and let me just hit a few enters here so it's easier to read, um, is that you want to check for the next condition that we had, which is whether the same values exist or not. So this is the thing that I'm talking about, which I've highlighted. So that's pretty easy to check as well. So we can just say text one i is equal equal to text two j. Well, in that case, we want to increment the value that we have. And that's pretty straightforward. You can just do one plus increment of this, and you can just check the last value that you have encountered. So basically, you're just updating the utility to take in dp, and then you're good to go. And the last condition that we had was you would find the max between i um, decrement of i versus decrement of j. And you would update it accordingly, so we can do that as well. So we can do j minus, oops, we can do j minus 1 and also dp i minus 1. So if you go ahead and have a look at, uh, let's do a quick print so that we know how it's looking. If you look at our dp, we'll, we'll get a better sense of what's really happening. Um, it's okay, we can ignore the runtime. Well, actually, we can't really ignore the runtime error. Just give me one sec. Um, it's showing that there's an error over here. Um, it doesn't really make sense. Maybe, oh, yeah, I know what's happening. Um, so I think just putting brackets here should work out in our favor. Let's just go ahead and run that. And we're getting a few other errors. Um, we can we can basically um, think about this thing as a problem that we were like thinking about i and j and this is like a good exercise to remember that i minus one um, and j minus one are the values that we're looking at this is because of how we structured our code hopefully this should not give any errors and we see our our dp grid so you can see all the values which are well all the indexes which are uh, zeros they have zeros inside of them and all the other values which we have is um, basically iterations on all the all the other increments. So let's just go ahead and and well, essentially what you what I wanted to show you guys was like the last value that we have over here is basically our answer. So it sort of adds up all together, and that's the value that you need. So let's just go ahead and run this. We can remove this print. And hopefully this should run fine. It's running fine. Let's just go ahead and submit this. I apologize for the previous errors. That was just um, my bad. But you can see that the submission has been accepted. And the reason why it's been accepted is because we are no longer running on a time complexity of 2 raised to power n. But you're running on a complexity of, well, you can see it. It's just n square. Well, n into m rather. And that's basically it. So when you want to try solving things using dynamic programming, there are multiple ways of solving this. You can also try using memoization or caching inside this function, and that would probably also work. Uh, there might be advantages to that. There might not be that many advantages to that. Um, but mostly, whenever people ask for the longest com common subsequence problem, they expect you to usually make a DP grid and use that DP grid to move forward. So again, the best approach that you can use in this case is that you use the utility function, do it recursively. When you're done with the recursive implementation, you ideally you're done um, because then you just have to, con converting it to a DP structure is a lot more easier because you know how the iterations are running and we basically went step by step to understand all the conditions and we just updated our DP as we went forward. And that's basically it. So cool. If you do have any comments or if there's something that you didn't understand, do let me know in the comment section below and I'll try to respond to your queries as soon as I can. And if you did like this video, do give a like and do subscribe to our channel via discussion over here and we would love to have you on board with us. And if you've already subscribed, you're awesome. We all know it and have an awesome day. Thank you.